What's up, everybody? I Urban TV, Double I TV, whatever you want to call me, as long as it's nothing disrespectful, because if it gets disrespectful, mm, oh, I got one. I'm going to pop you in the neck with my hands. <laughs> A lot of y'all not going to understand that reference. Uh, it was this old game back in the day that was called Driver 2. And like the opening cutscene, it literally starts off with this guy uh, with this deep voice talking about some. I'm going to pop you in the neck with my hands. Look it up on YouTube. Driver 2 intro or something like that. Just look it up. And I'd like to welcome y'all to another episode of Squirrel Moments, the podcast. We are on episode, what episode are we on? Jeez, um, eight, I believe. Let's look. I believe it's episode eight. If not, um, it'll be corrected on the title somewhere. And um, today's date right now, it is July the 24th on the day of this um on this recording and it's funny it's it is 1 10 in the morning so the day just started as i decided to um as i decided to record this episode so um how many weeks has it been since the last episode i think about three almost four weeks i'm trying to be more consistent y'all I, i'm trying i'm really trying but you know when you work a full-time job and then you have other stuff going on um yeah your attention is kind of away from other stuff so um yeah, hold on, let me drink some water real quick, because just like the last episode, my allergies decided to mess up when I start recording. Mm. This time, though, I did um, take some allergy medicine, so hopefully that should, my allergies should stop acting up pretty soon. But um, anyway, uh, what was I ready to say? What was I ready to say? What was I ready to say? Uh, before we get to the podcast, before we get to everything, um, for anybody that's watching the video version um go ahead and press like drop a comment all that kind of stuff yada yada whoop de whoop if anybody's listening to the audio version which is available on um spotify google podcast anchor.fm and i think that's another one i'm not 100 sure without actually looking at it um yeah I appreciate y'all for listening. Um, go ahead and rate the podcast with however the rating podcast. Uh, I mean, the rating podcast, the rating system goes. <laughs> yeah, I'm already off. <laughs> y'all know I'm. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Oh, uh, before we move on, um, again, if you're watching the video, if you, oh my gosh. If you're watching the video version, um, go ahead and follow me on all my social medias, which is on the screen. Um, if you listen to the audio version, um, all my social medias are iIrvin TV. Uh, of course, obviously, YouTube. I have Instagram, which I'm mo most active on. Twitter. Uh, what else? Snapchat, which I have to figure that out because I see a lot of friend requests on there, but I'm trying to make it. I'm not sure if it's public. I don't think it's public, so I got to look into that and of course i have a tiktok don't worry i'm not doing crazy tiktok dances so but anyway and also if you want to financially support the um the podcast the channel all that kind of stuff you can make a donation through um through cash out which is dollar sign i earn the tv so if you want to support the channel again you're not obligated to you do not have to but if you want to i appreciate y'all ahead of time so Anyway, let's get to it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about um, is not even nothing news related. So the other day, what was it? Yesterday, well, two days ago now, because it's past midnight. I made another trip to the micro center. Now, if you um, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I made a trip to the um to the micro center, and I got some stuff. Um, me and my friend um who y'all know as Loud Hippie, who I call her every three months because she dropped a video every three months. Although now I think it's been four months. So we're going to start calling her every four months. <laughs> uh, she knows who she is. You know, I, I hope she's listening. But um, yeah, so let me, if you're watching the video version, you're going to see the stuff that I got. But I'm going to describe everything that I have so people that's listening um, can know what's going on. So let me... 
Okay. So let me show y'all what I got. So this is all the stuff that I got. Now, hold on. Actually, before I do that, before I do that, before I do that, now everything I'm gonna show y'all um, is not from the Micro Center. I did treat myself to some other stuff as well. So, all right. So before we get to the Micro Center stuff, actually, let's let's. So this is the first thing I want to show y'all. I want the uh, five below right today. Now. Uh, <laughs> Um, I mentioned this many times, but Five Below was um, one of my favorite places um, to shop at. Like, it used to be a point that every time I get paid, I would stop by Five Below and just go shopping there. And I still do it to this day. Not as much, but yeah. So, what I got in my hand right now is an Among Us um, pillow. Now, if you don't know what Among Us is, um, it's a game that, um, you know, well... If you don't know, you don't know. But <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me, y'all. And I'm not even really tired. I'm actually really energetic. I think because I took a nap earlier. But this is a Among Us pillow. So this pillow is looking mighty sus right now. So they had like two other pillows. But I like this one the most. It was, um, yeah. So, and this should encourage everybody that's listening to the audio version. Um, if you can safely. Because if you're driving, don't, don't try to watch this. But this should uh, give y'all incentives to, um, to watch the video version. But yeah, I got this Among Us pillow. So I'm going to add it to my collection of pillows that I have behind me. Which, okay, wrong way. So, of course, I got this black pillow that says Game On with the controller in there. But that one has a hole in it because I try to rip off the tag. And I end up putting a hole in it. And then I have my Halo pillow. So add this to my collection of pillows. Put that right there. Um, What else we got? So... I have this Grogu mug. Uh, so the same day that me and um, Loud Hippie, aka every three months, because um, we actually went to the micro center together, because she's in the tech just as much as I am. She's actually in the IT field. She actually got me this Grogu mug. So uh, I definitely appreciate this mug, because, yeah. Um, so I'm going to put it beside my Master Chief mug, which I have on my desk right here. You can't see it. Actually, let me show y'all real quick. Uh, so yeah, this is my Master Chief mug. Yep. So that's that. And then this is actually a funny. Uh, 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 well, not really funny. This is an interesting purchase. So y'all know the um the Doctor Squash. Um, I think that's how you say Doctor Squash. Um, so commercials that y'all see on um YouTube, it'd be like. What soap do you use? Uh, you still use a mommy soap? They have a Star Wars um, line of soap. Soon as I saw that commercial, next day I bought it. So, and it just came in um, the other day. So this is it right here. Um, I'm definitely keeping this box and I am gonna use the soap, of course. But yeah, so <laughs> this is the, really the only reason why I bought it because of Star Wars. So they have an Obi-Wan soap which is called Only Hope Soap. Um, let me see. Benonite Clay Zero Grit. Then they have a Yoda Soap, uh, which is called Wisdom Watch, which, let's see, Lotus Leaf. Then, of course, we have the Dark Vader Soap, which is Dark Side Scrub, which, <laughs> this is the funniest one. It's sand heavy grit. <laughs> I find it funny because, you know, Anakin hates soap. I mean, I hate soap. Oh, gosh. What is wrong with me, y'all? Just, 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 anyway. <laughs> Anakin hates sand. I hate sand. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they straight up carry uh, my boy Anakin, Darth Vader. And then, of course, he had the, uh, the Darth Maul soap, which is called Roofless Rinse, which has black sand in it. So, yeah. And then, of course, this is the box. Which the box have Obi-Wan and it has Attack of the Clones Obi-Wan on there. It has Yoda on there, Darth Vader, and Darth Maul. And then under the soap, uh, it also has their um, lightsabers as well. So, yeah, this is the box. I'm definitely keeping the box. And I paid about $40 for this. So, and I have a feeling that this is going to last a while. And then um, on the back it says, in the galaxy of synthetic detergents filled with harsh chemicals, Dr. Squatch 
creates a disturbance in your clean routine by bringing new hope to your soap with only the finest ingredients that are sure to bring balance to your shower destiny. Yep, so yeah, I, <laughs> I had to get this. And you know what's funny? Um, usually I always skip those commercials, but as soon as I saw the Star Wars one, I said I had to get it. Because usually I use black soap. I don't use a lot of, I don't use the soaps that you, you know, that you get from the store. I can't even think of the brands. I can't even think of the brands anymore because I stopped using that uh, synthetic soap because I'm trying to keep my... I'm trying to, I try to get more into natural products rather than synthetic and a whole bunch of chemicals. I don't like putting a whole bunch of chemicals on my um, on my skin, on my hair, or anything like that. And I just did a water burp ill. But <laughs> I don't like using a lot of um, synthetic products and, you know, I just like to take care of myself. And I'm taking my shoes off, so that's why I'm doing a whole bunch of movement. By the way, y'all see my Grogu shirt? Um, yep, this is my Grogu shirt. Well, it says the child on there. Uh, also got that from Five Below as well. So, um, what else I was saying? Yeah, I, I just don't like using a whole bunch of synthetic products and all that stuff. Um, I just, you know, I just like to take care of myself. Cause like the the lotion I use is um, it used to be cocoa butter, but then I switched to um, what is it? Um, aloe vera soap. So, aloe vera soap, oh my gosh, lotion. <laughs> aloe vera um, lotion. And then, I also use shea butter as well, but I don't use that as often because it's so thick and you have to use water and all that stuff. And then sometimes it feels, it's not greasy, but it feels greasy. Although I didn't use it today because um, if you're watching the, um, the video version, you notice that I finally wrapped myself up because these last couple of videos, I be looking rough. I look like the black Wolverine with locks. Look like Wolverine from Africa. <laughs> and I also put some uh, shea butter in my hair too. So I did do that. But anyway, let's let's keep moving on. So now we're gonna get to the stuff that um that I got from the micro center. Now uh, that's the receipt. Now and all this stuff is gonna come to um the reason why I'm sharing this stuff is gonna come together at the end. But um I bought this TP-Link um, 8-port gigabyte switch. Not the Nintendo Switch, but a uh, switch which is used to, um, what's the best way to describe it? You can plug it up to your router and then you have more um, Ethernet ports. Because you know with um, most routers it only comes with like three or four Ethernet ports. And I have a switch in here, but it only has up to one, two, three, four ports. And I'm you know, I have more devices in my room, so I need to expand. So I got an eight port gigabyte um, switch, which you can see right here. I'm gonna show y'all on the camera. Uh, yeah, and it was on sale. It says $21.99 on there, but it was for sale. I forgot what the actual price was. I think it might have been just $19.99. So just a few dollars, but still, I knew I, I, I need one. So that's that. Um, the next three. Now the next three items, um, hold on, before I show you the next three items, I don't know if I told y'all before, um, was it the last episode or was the episode before that? I, I don't remember, I think it was the episode before that, um, where I talked about I went to the micro center before, the, um, this is the first time I went to the micro center, I bought some stuff to upgrade my, um, uh, my current PC, um, you know, upgrade the motherboard, processor, all that kind of stuff. Well, I still have my old motherboard with the old processor and the RAM still, which still is in perfect condition. So what I plan on doing is building a second PC. And what this PC is going to do is, um, what this second PC is going to do, I'm going to use this PC strictly for recording because what, um, I stream, do, 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 what is it? Bio Mutant last week, and while it was while the recording was decent, because I like to record and stream at the same time, while I was, and I was playing Bio Mutant on the PC, and um, it just kept struggling because it couldn't handle all that work. Which the thing, the only thing that confuses me is it was it's able to handle Jedi Fallen Order, which is while it's older. It is much more intensive. So I mean, Jedi Fallen Order. Sometimes the frame, the the frame rate drops, but with Bio Mutant, it was dropping like real 
bad. Like, it, it was dropping. Not super bad, but enough that it was noticeable. It was very noticeable. Like, irritating noticeable. So I was like, you know what? If I build a second PC, and I got the Elgato capture card, so I can just plug it up to this this desktop that I have now, um, and it's just make it easier recording, and it'll just be much smoother. So that being said, so the first thing is I got an SSD um, hard drive with 512 gigabytes. Now, usually, and y'all gonna see the price tag going here. Uh, for those that watch the video version, come on, focus. Actually, I have autofocus off, but um, usually this is a hundred and twenty dollars, but it was on sale for fifty nine ninety nine, half off. I couldn't turn that down because I was gonna get a um a traditional mechanical hard drive, which was one terabyte, but as SSD, which is much faster. So I had to get it. I had to get it, y'all. I had to get it. So, hold on. I'm gonna keep showing y'all. The heck was that? What was that? Hold on. Something just fell. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Uh, it might have been just a rabbit. Yeah, I have a pet rabbit. Um. But yeah. What's, what's the next thing? Um. Uh, of course. Got a uh, what is it? Eva, 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 E V G A, Eva, 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 Eva. Got a power supply, a 500 watt on um, power supply, of course, because I need a power supply. And then, da, 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 da. Ooh. <laughs> I got the thermal. Thermal take um mid tower case is the H two hundred TG. So I thought I got the white version because this is oh, turn this around. So this is the white version right here for those that's watching the um the video version. I thought I got the white, but then when I got home I noticed it was the black, which is all good. I don't care. But um I think how much this cost. I think like $89.99. But yeah. But yeah, I needed another case course to put the you know hard drive and all that stuff in but and it has it gonna have the RGB lights as well so it's gonna have the lights in the front now what I plan on doing is and after this we're gonna move on to the news and stuff but what I'm gonna do is the hardware that I have in my current case I'm gonna transfer it to my new case because that one looks better and it looks cooler and then the old stuff I'm gonna put it back in my old case so that's what I plan on doing. So, um, what else? Yeah, that's it. Now I do plan on getting a GPU, but I'm gonna use one because what I'm using this one for, I don't need nothing too strong, just a decent one. Um, I mean, the processor does have a dedicated um, GPU. It does have, an, uh, not dedicated, uh, integrated GPU, but I do want its own graphics card so I'll probably get it off Facebook marketplace or something like that no I'm planning on spending no more than a hundred dollars on it that being said I need to start spending money ever since I got this job at Amazon I've been kind of spending a little bit more money than I should have I mean don't get me wrong cuz because you know I've been in debt and all that stuff and I'm still in debt but I am making my payments and all that kind of stuff I'm starting to bring that debt down now so I mean you got to treat yourself but we're gonna talk about more of that at the uh, towards the end of the podcast Cause you know, at the end of the podcast, I like to do like life stuff, like to give advice and all that kind of stuff. But let, let, let's just move on to the next. Um, I had a stunt real quick, you know. I had a stunt. I had to flex. I had to flex. <laughs> nah, I just like to share some of this stuff, you know, because all this stuff or majority of the stuff that I got, uh, it all. Mm, at the end of the day, it all goes towards the channel. I mean, it's fun to build PCs and all this stuff is real fun. But at the end of the day, it all goes towards the channel to create content. Uh, Cause I like, mm, I like creating, con I just finished eating. I like creating content for y'all and I like creating and making good content. But anyway, enough flexing. Let's get to the new stuff. So, not too long ago, um, on the 
who was it on the 22nd i believe yep 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 yep, yep. on the 22nd apparently there was a huge um internet outage and this um oh my gosh what's wrong with me hold on let me drink some water real quick mm. drink some water i got some alkaline water stay hydrated y'all it is important to stay hydrated i'm always going to remind y'all to stay hydrated Fun fact, I don't know if I had said this um, before. Um, I used to hate drinking water. I used to, I couldn't drink water to save my life at one point. I, I like only like just a few years ago, I started really drinking water. I couldn't drink nothing but like, and I'm not a soda person, but I, drink, I used to drink like a lot of juice. A lot of juice. But anyway, um, this article is from The Verge. And it read as following. Let me switch over real quick. Boop. Anyway, so banks, brokerages, PSN, the Steam store, and more went down in massive internet outage. Many websites, including banking pages, okay, just make sure my stuff works. <laughs> brokerages and gaming services were affected for just over an hour Thursday as part of a major internet outage. During the outage, consumers were unable to access services like Ali Bank, Fidelity, Sony's PlayStation Network, Airbnb, and more. Several airline sites were also affected. Delta, British Airways, and Southwest sites were either down or had important functionality like flight check-ins broken. Ooh, that had not been good. Many sites appear to be functional again after Akami is that how you say it? Akami, AKA MAI. This right here. A content delivery network that hosts as much of the internet started rolling out a fix to its service. We are continuing to. This is what they quoted. Um, we are. This is what they said. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? We are continuing to monitor the situation and can confirm this was not a result of a cyber attack on the Akami platform, says Akami in email to The Verge. They say it's not, it wasn't a cyber attack, but it could have been a cyber attack. Conspiracy theory. Um, it quickly became clear that Akami was involved with many websites attributing the outages to the CDN provider. Larger outlets included the New York Metro Transportation Authority and the Times of India, who tweeted that their service outages were due to Akami. Cloudflare's CEO has chimed in to say that its services isn't to blame. To do, you may be unable to access several digital tools, including blah, 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 whoop, de, whoop, and whoop, 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 because of global Akami outages right now. Do, 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 do. So, they're just saying that they're, this is a whole bunch of tweets just saying from these companies like Times of India and Fidelity Investments just saying that their sites are, um, are down. Gaming services were also hit hard by the internet issues. Down Detector reported a spike of over 40,000 users who were having issues with the PlayStation Network and the Steam Store also had functionality issues. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I almost just fell. <laughs> well, not almost fell, but like my knee was on the arm of the chair and like the the arm moved, so I almost fell to the side. The Undertaker also reported issues with games like Fortnite and Call of Duty. Screw Call of Duty, and I'm, I'm gonna let you know why. We're gonna get there. Sony's PSN status page acknowledged an issue shortly before we published this post. PlayStation Network services are up and running, but there are external internet wide issues that might affect your experience the company wrote blah, 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 blah. i'm gonna finish reading this as far as more essential services a number of banks websites will also appear to have been rendered non-functional during the outage and there were reports of 911 systems being down across oh gosh yeah 911 systems are down that's that's a bad thing it is however unclear if the emergency services outage were related to the other web outages uh the Shell's Department of Grayson County, Virginia, reported that its 911 outage stemmed from a fiber cut, which has now been fixed. 
outages like this show that while the web is decentralized in theory, many major sites functionality is dependent on a handful of companies. In June, a single customer hit a bug that brought down Fastly CDN service and Reddit, Twitch, and The Verge went down with it. Problems with Amazon's web services have also caused major outages in the past. So, yeah. Basically, the internet, um, a lot of it went down. And, you know, it's crazy that, um, and even I was watching a, um, a video from, um, on Rich from Review Tech USA. And, he, and he's, even he said, like, the internet is important now. Just like, you know, cars are, imp are important. Your air conditioning, electricity, all that is important. And... <sighs> You know, stuff happens all the time, but at the same time, especially something this big, like if you're trying to catch a flight and all that stuff down, the system is down and all that stuff, you can't catch your flight. You know, the banking services are down. Like the, the biggest one was the 911 um, services. Think about it. You're trying to call 911, somebody break into your house. You know, you're trying to call 911 and the system is down. Like, okay, the game, like, you know, PlayStation, Steam, and all this stuff. All right, whatever. We can survive without video games for like a few hours, whatever. But like 911? 911? Somebody break into your house? You can't even call 911 because the internet now? Now, granted, with that being said, I believe that um, everybody should have the fences in their homes, if you know what I mean. I do believe in the second amendment i do believe that everybody has the right to defend themselves so police are first responders again they respond to the situation they don't prevent the situation but that's a whole nother story um but yeah the internet was down so uh, obviously everything is back up or everything and this was a worldwide thing too for the most part because i'm looking at this map hold on let me um let me let me bring this back up. If you look at this map right here, for those that's watching the video version, most of it happened um, on the east coast in the um, south of America, and then a majority of it also happened in Europe as well. So yeah, that's crazy. Now speaking of Steam, there has been a lot of talks about this Steam Deck. And I was seeing a lot of talks of it, but I wasn't paying too much attention until now. Um, so this article is from PC Gamer, and this article was posted 16 hours ago, actually. So I mean, it's been in the it's been oh my gosh, what is wrong with me, y'all? Uh, there've been a lot of talks about it the last couple of days, but everything has been um confirm as a recent let's switch over so steam deck everything we know about Valve's new he handheld gaming device Valve is getting into handheld gaming business here's the scoop on the new steam deck i'm not going to read this whole thing but i am going to read because this thing is long but here's a picture of it and it kind of reminds me a little bit of the switch to a certain degree but it definitely looks but it, it's definitely bigger from the looks of it. Um, the rumors were right, and the Steam Deck is coming this year. A handheld device that can play any game in your Steam Steam library. It's aiming to be the Nintendo Switch for PC gaming. Essentially, though, the Steam Deck can do a lot more than just play games. So basically, what it is is um, it's a mobile PC. It's it's a yeah, a mobile a handheld PC. Not a laptop, but a handheld. There's a difference. That's because it's not it's not a games console. It's really a portable PC. You can plug it into a monitor or a TV, install apps and software, use it to watch steam stream streaming, streaming video and more. Let's just say use it while streaming videos. Even install other game stores on it according to Val. The Steam Deck will run on a new version of Steam OS. Valve's Linux-based operating system, though you'll be able to play Windows games that don't have official Linux support using Valve's compatibility tech, Proton, or even uninstall Steam OS and just install Windows. That's actually pretty cool. 
uh, let's see, do, 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 do. Uh, the release date, the Steam Deck will begin shipping in December 2021, which means I have enough time to save some money for it. But then again, um, I'm supposed to be saving up and removing all my debt. So this might be a late purchase for me. Anyway, um, <laughs> however, that doesn't mean if you reserve one, you receive it this year. As Steam Deck site is now showing expected order availability in second quarter of 2022 for each version of the deck across both the UK and US. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Let's skip over. You can use five, you know, five dollars to put down a reservation to de a deposit, whatever. Blah blah. blah. Oop, de, boop. The Steam Deck is currently only available in res for to reserve for the UK, US, Canada, and the European Union. Do, 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 do. So here's the prices for it. So it's three ninety nine for the sixty four gigabyte, which is not a lot. Especially when we're talking about AAA games. Most AAA games are 64 gigabytes. Come on, let's talk about, I don't even want to say it, but Call of Duty. Again, I'm going to get to that. $529 for the 256 gigabyte version and 649 for the 512. The most expensive versions of the Steam Deck features fast NVMe SSD storage while the cheaper is listed with a 64 gigabyte eMMC which stands for embedded multimedia card storage solution. All three versions will let you increase storage space with a micro SD card at least. Do, 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 do. Now these are the specs. So the CPU has AMD Zen 2 which is I believe is it's the same one found within AMD Ryzen 3000. So, nice. And then the core it has four cores in it, which is nice. Um, with eight thread, CPU clock speed 2.4 to 3.5 gigahertz per second. Um, is it per second? Oh, yeah. I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. GPU AMD RDNA 2, GPA compute units 8, GPU clock speed. I'm sorry, y'all. 1 to 1 1.6 gigahertz. RAM is 16 gigabytes. Let me see. Storage. I already said the storage 64, 256, and 7-inch uh, LCD touchscreen resolution 1280 by 800, which is not bad. Refresh rate 660. Do, do audio serial speakers 3.5 mini jack dual mics, USB Type C slash Bluetooth. Then connectivity, all oh, that stuff. Blah blah blah. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, what else is useful in here? Do, do, do. Does the Steam Deck has a kickstand? No. What game will run on Steam Deck? Do, do, do. All the games we want to be playable is really the entire Steam library. We haven't really found something we couldn't throw at this device that it couldn't handle. Do, do. Is it bigger than the Nintendo Switch? Yes, basically. A bit, yes, for comparison. The Nintendo Switch the standard version is 9.4. Anything I should be concerned about? Well, yeah, battery life doesn't sound especially stellar. So yeah, it's do, 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 it's about 2.8 hours depending on what you're doing. Do, do. You can play Portal 2 for uh, for four hours on this thing. If you limit it to 30 frames per second, you're gonna be playing for five to six hours. So not a long time for gaming without the device needing to be plugged in or recharged. Uh, da, da, da. Which, if you're playing on a portable, even like you know, playing the Switch or 3DS, all that kind of stuff, most of the time you're only gonna be playing it when you're traveling. So, and if you're not traveling, you can be able to plug it up. So, so does the Steam Deck come with a dock like the Nintendo Switch? There is a dock, but it's sold separately. Da, 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 da. I'm, I'm done with reading. Da, da, da. Yeah, I'm done with reading that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that is definitely, it is, that is definitely cool. And, you know, there's been a lot of talks about it. So, would I be getting one? I don't know. 
To be honest, I'm not sure. I know it said earlier I might be getting it, but it, 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 I just don't want to spend a lot of money on it and then it's sitting around collecting dust. But it's definitely cool that now you could bring basically your PC wherever, you know, whenever. So, but I'm one of those type of people that uh, when new stuff, like new devices like this come out, I like to wait a little bit and see how it actually works because that's a lot of, it, it, it's a lot of hardware stuff inside this small device so i want to see how it works out and all that kind of stuff it's definitely with me definitely getting into pc more i definitely i definitely like to um try to get my hands on it but i don't know yet but it's definitely interesting um yeah and what other pc games that i Oh, I can play Star Wars The Old Republic from my bed. <laughs> it's also cool, too, that it has a dock, so you can dock it to your TV and all that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. I could play Star Wars The Old Republic from my bed. I play a lot of uh, PC games from my bed. Even games that I have on the Xbox, you know, like Halo and all that stuff, I can play that from my bed. Huh. We might have to get this. I'm probably not going to get it immediately it's probably gonna be like next year last year next year you know i'm not in no rush again i'm about to have two pcs i have an xbox one x series x all right let me stop flexing <laughs> um no i work hard for this stuff so anyway next up on some news Grogu is shown building a lightsaber on this new poster that's been leaked um, from the Mandalorian. Do, 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 do. Can see my disabling because my ad locker is on. Uh, let's switch over. So, Star Wars The Mandalorian poster may spoil Luke and Grogu's Jedi training. A new official, officially licensed Star Wars poster shows Grogu and Luke Skywalker building a new lightsaber. Is this part of the Younglings training? And this was published five hours ago, probably six now, because I opened this like almost an hour ago. The Mandalorian Grogu might not yet be big enough to wield a lightsaber, but in, um, this is just a small, this is crop, you know, this picture is crop. Matter of fact, let me scroll down. This is the poster right here. Yep. It definitely looks cool. And one thing I noticed too, that Luke is, um, his robes, instead of all black, they're actually brown. So it looks like he's changing the color of his robes. I mean, in the new trilogy, his robes are brown, though. So it makes sense as he starts teach, you know, teaching more. I think when, when he becomes a teacher, you know, when he's training other Jedi, he wears the brown robes. But when he's out on missions, he wears the black. So it makes sense. Um, where were we at? We might just be add up enough to build one and a new officially licensed wall poster from Shop Trends, and it might just foreshadow what's in store for the character after his most recent appearance in the Disney Plus series. Oh gosh, the season finale for The Mandalorian, um, for the second season was great. Okay, um, the poster illustrated by Russell Walks is entitled. No, in entitled Size Matter Not shows Grogu still known as Baby Yoda by many force levitated pieces of an unassembled lightsaber. A Mandalorian arrow, Luke Skywalker stands behind him. Likewise, levitating woods, likely a yellow kyper crystal, the source of the lightsaber's power. The illustration could possibly serve as a peek into Luke's eventual training of the young force wielder in the ways of the Jedi Knight. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, but yeah, this poster definitely looks cool. I'm that. You know, the future of um, Star Wars has definitely been looking awesome, you know, the last year or two. Um, you know, the second season of Mandalorian, you know, they announced the Ahsoka. They announced the book of um, the book of Boba Fett. Of course, um, the Obi-Wan, um, the Kenobi show, I believe that's in production. I think they're filming that already. So, and of course, Bad Batch. And that's good. Um, I haven't watched a recent episode. Um, well, episodes because I'm behind two episodes. And, you know, they just... I did the reaction to Star Wars Visions, which is the uh, post we like um, some anime. I don't even think it's shorts. Anime um, 
version of Star Wars, basically, in Star Wars in anime fashion. So, yeah, that's def that's definitely interesting. But let me go back to that post so again. If y'all want to look at it one more time, for those looking at the uh, video version, where we have right now, 41 minutes. We still have a couple articles to go. But let me drink some water real quick, y'all. Mm-mm-mm. You know what? Have I had a squirrel moment yet? I might have one in the beginning. I don't know. Um. Anyway, let's go into the next article. Um. Here we go. So apparently, Tom Clancy's mobile game is getting shut down. So let's switch over. So this, hold on, did I say what this, oh, the last article that I read too was from CBR.com, um, I forgot to say that, but this article is from Kotaku, in which it says, uh, Ubisoft shuttles troubled Tom Clancy game a year after launch, Elite Squad was created by Outland, I think I said that? Right, O W L I E N T, a studio long headed by Ubisoft's CEO son. Hmm. Uh, let's see. And in the picture here, it has Sam Fisher on here and some other um, Ubisoft characters. Let's see. In August of last year, Ubisoft launched a mobile Tom Clancy action RPG called Elite Squad, which featured. Which featured characters from Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, Splinter Cell, The Division, Hawks, uh, which was that airplane game, and In War. I actually liked the In War. In War was cool. I In War deserved more than it um receive. It was it was a definitely uh excuse me a different type of strategy game. It was it, it was definitely different. I actually liked it, and I wish they made a second one, but I guess it didn't make enough money. And I'm taking my socks off. I'm sorry, y'all. It's it's getting hot in here. <laughs> so take off all your clothes. I am getting so hot. I want to take my clothes off. You know, I'm going to turn this fan on. I'm sorry if I can hear it in the audio, but I got to turn this fan on. Because um, it is getting... This shit, See, the crazy thing about this house is, is like, all the rooms in the house, like, because the air condition is on. So, like, all the rooms in this house will get the full air condition with the exception of this room. When it's cold in um out there, it's hot in here. When it's hot out there, it's cold in here. I felt bad for my sister because she this used to be her room. Um, sorry, I'm kind of testing the chair because the wheel fall, fell off earlier. Um, oh my gosh, this podcast is terrible, y'all. It almost fell too. Give me a second, y'all. I'm about to fix my chair real quick. <laughs> now this is a huge squirrel moment. <laughs> oh god, just podcast is terrible um there we go gotta make sure i don't fall anyway i'm having a whole bunch of squirrel moments right now i just mentioned too that i wasn't having a squirrel moment but now i'm having a huge one but yeah i felt bad for my sister because this used to be her room a long time ago but anyway today less than a full year later (laughs) ubisoft's Oatlyn Studio announced that Tom Clancy's Marvel's Adventures. Duh, 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 duh. Oh my gosh. Announced that Tom Clancy's Marvel's Adventures is shutting down. What? I guess there's a Tom Clancy Marvel Adventure game? What? Hold on. Let's look up something real quick. Hold on. Tom Clancy's what? That might that might be a typo. Yeah, I, that's a typo right there. I think it meant to say Tom Clancy's um Elite Squad. Yeah, that's a big typo. The company delivered the news in a post on Elite Squad Elite Squad's website. It is with great deal of sadness that we are announcing we will no longer be releasing new content for Elite Squad. The games development team wrote today's update will be our last and on october 4th 2021 we will shut down shut the servers down this was not an easy decision but after exploring multiple options with our teams 
we came to the conclusion that it was no longer sustainable aka they didn't make them um enough money and not enough people um participated in the microtransactions nine times out of ten at least squad made by the studio initially co-headed by ubisoft ceo ceo yes government's son charlie was troubled from the get-go when it first launched it was criticized for a cinematic that link imagery I'm sorry, y'all. That advocated uh, Black Lives Matter to terrorism, prompting Ubisoft to apologize and remove the imagery. What the heck? Why did I not hear about this? Reviews, meanwhile, painted Elite Squad as a fairly generic gacha, G A C H A game, and it seemingly failed to attract much of the player base. The junior Gully Mont helping lead the studio also left. Outlet in May 2021. Now the game has reached the end of the line. Da, 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 da. So if you care about that, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks like this game is getting shut down, unfortunately. And like with that, um, I mean, I didn't even know about this game till now. So that just tells y'all like uh, what was going on with this game. Not a lot of people knew about it. So I mean, that's that. Now, now, here's some good news that I really want to get to. If y'all notice, every every single podcast that I've done, well, I ain't going to say every single, but most episodes, oh gosh, what is wrong with me, y'all? Most episodes of the podcast, I always talk about Halo Infinite. So now... I have an article from IGN which gives more Halo Infinite news. And we have this. 343 Industries reveals technical preview details, aka basically a beta. That's basically a fancy way of saying beta. There's still no official date for the preview though. And this um, article was posted yesterday on the 23rd. 343 Industries has revealed some details about its forthcoming technical preview and while the studio isn't ready to pick an exact date, it has revealed it has revealed that a bot focused technical preview could happen as early as next week. This news comes by the way of the latest Halo Infinite inside Infinite blog post. From that. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> Which details some of the studio's plans around its upcoming multiplayer preview which it refers to as flighting. 343 Industries doesn't yet have a date to announce yet, but a preview could be happening next week. Blah, 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 screenshot. Ooh, 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 ooh. We know the largest question it now is, when is the technical preview? The blog post reads, the release of this blog means we're getting very close, but flighting itself is a fluid process. So we need to ensure we've successfully successfully clear our final gate before we're officially a go that said we've been given the okay to say our first bot focused technical preview could happen as soon as next weekend so it looks like what they're doing is this beta is um instead of fighting each other you know uh pvp is more pve from the sounds of it and instead of they, they basically just, they, they, they're going to be testing it on bots and all this stuff. But it, it, it explains more in this um, article. See, this article, I don't mind reading a whole bunch of it. 343 Industries says that uh, that prior to the flight starting, the studio is planning a live stream where it, dive, where it will dive into the actual belt that players will be previewing and walk viewers through every facet of the preview. I think that's how you say that, F-A-C-E-T. The studio plans to... <laughs> Host hundreds of thousands of Halo insiders during this first technical preview, and if all goes well, it will invite even more for the next flight. As the blog post states, the first technical preview will be centered on Halo Infinite's bot features, and head of creative for Halo Infinite, Joseph Staten, I think that's Staten, yeah, says it's one of their favorite features. They are, without a doubt, one of my favorite features of Halo Infinite, Staten writes in the blog post. In the early Halo games, they were a feature that we've always wanted to land, but that consistently got cut due to limited time and resources. So I'm very happy we've been 
able to make them happen this time around. Oh, okay, so it's not just the test of bots. How, how can I say this? So it's gonna have a bot feature on there. A bots feature on there. So you know like some games, like some first person shooters, it's like you can play with others, but then it also if you want to, you can play with bots, similar like to the original I think, yeah, the original Red Faction, also like Star Wars Battlefront, the originals, although the new ones have bots in there as well now, but yeah. As for what that means, Staten, as for what that means, Staten says the bots come in four different variants, Recruit, Marine, ODST, and Spartan, with Spartan being the hottest bot skill level to compete against naturally. Staten said, Staten said the bots are designed to play like actual players, citing examples how exactly they mimic that behavior. ODST and Spartan bots will effectively dodge grenades and rockets. Recruits and Marines will not, uh, Staten writes. All bots use equipment and higher level bots will grapple shot you <laughs> to finish you with a melee kill. Bots keep track of power weapon spawns and spirit and sprint to spirit. Oh my gosh, this, this is probably one of the worst episodes ever, but I don't care. I'm still gonna put it out. <laughs> this is what I love to do, but it's late. And higher level bots will grapple shot to you to finish you with a melee. Yeah. Bots keep track of power weapon spawns and sprint to claim them but most importantly bots are fair we don't change their health and damage values per difficulty level they just get smarter and more res ref resourceful <laughs> the higher you go do, 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 do. stat staten said in the first technical preview the bots will start on the easiest difficulty the marine difficulty and scale up to spartan the better you play the bot arena as three for three industries refers to it as in the blog post will feature Slayer across three maps Bazaar, Recharge and Live Fire. The following sub -wet, subset of weapon drills will be available during the previews uh, let's see the MA40 AR, BR75, the MK50 Sidekick, the CQS48 Bulldog, Needler VK78 Commando S7 Sniper Plasma Pistol, Pulse Carbine, Carbine Ravager, you can say that anyway, Pause, the Carbine, Carbine, Ravager, Heat Wave, and the Skewer. Elsewhere in this edition of Inside Infinite, 343 Industries stresses that these technical previews are about the technical aspects of the game. Basically saying that there's still going to be some flaws in there and, you know, it's still in development so it's not going to be perfect. We're specifically calling this a technical preview because we feel it best represents the goals we have, aka a uh, fancy way of saying beta or alpha the build itself and the experience that insiders will have the blog post reads the build itself and experience that insiders will have our key driver and goal is truly technical in nature we're looking to push our systems and services at our larger scale that we we've been able to thus far as an important step towards ensuring we are ready as possible when the floodgates fully open at launch this holiday do, do, do anything else Uh, yep, that's everything uh, on that um boo -boo -boo, on that article. So basically, it looks like they're gonna be having a new bot mode, which I think is cool. So hopefully, in the final version, they'll also still have bots as well. Like, let's just say you want to play by yourself and you just want to play against bots, or you do split. Screen. Are they gonna have split screen on here? I don't, I don't know. But and you know, it's funny. I was just streaming today too, cause I was um. Or last night, man, oh gosh. I was streaming last night. Oh, I was streaming up to like 11 something. And I was just talking about Halo Infinite because I was streaming Halo 5. And I was saying, you know what? Since it's going to be free to play, all my cousins, I hope, hopefully, my cousins are listening. All the people that are close to me, y'all better be playing. I don't want to hear no excuses. Um, and this is before I really found out about the. Um, about the Activision stuff, which we're gonna get into later. But uh, I was like, y'all better not all be playing Warzone. Y'all better not all be playing Apex, which I have nothing against those games. It's just, I'm not big on Battle Royale. Although I did say if Halo has a Battle Royale, I would like to see how that turns out. But um, 
Yeah, I was just talking about that earlier. So, uh, I know you have to be signed up for, um, I forgot what it was called. I know I'm signed up for it. So, uh, it's like their newsletter services or whatever. So, you have to be signed up for that. So, I recommend if y'all want to um, play that, if y'all want to be a part of that, go ahead and sign up for it. Um, hopefully, they will let us, if we're able to let us stream it because I definitely would like to show y'all um, that experience but anyway um, next article we got some more news stuff and this is actually um, this is actually a pretty exciting thing as well um, this also is from IGN Dead Space Remake officially announced coming to PS5, Xbox Series and PC EA Motive is developing the remake of the beloved Visceral Games horror classic. That it is. EA has announced the return of Dead Space with EA Motive set to remake the original 2008 acclaimed survival horror game. Oh my gosh, this game came out in 2008. I am old. I'm old. I don't get no. I remember when this game first came out. Announced during EA Play Live 2021 following previous rumors of the Dead Space remake. EA confirmed that they are currently working on a Dead Space 1 remake set for release on PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, and PC. No official release date or window was given, but the first tr teaser trailer offered an in engine look at the mood and tone mode of it striving to capture with the remake. It will be built from the ground up in the Frostbite engine with the developers looking to take advantage of the advanced SSDs. 3D audio and more new tech of the latest console generation to bring Isaac's journey aboard the USG Ishimura to life once again. Do, do, do. They also working close with the fans, the early production, blue blue. Do, do, do. Yeah, that's that. So basically, EA is making um uh, a remake for the first Dead Space from the ground up, and the reason why. This interests me, right? Now, mind y'all, I'm not big on the horror scene. Like, I, you know, I don't watch a lot of scary movies. I don't even play a lot of horror games, although I did do a Let's Play for Resident Evil um, 3 because Resident Evil 3 was the very first Resident Evil game I ever played. So I had to do that remake. I'm not too big on the horror genre, but with that being said, not because I'm scared or anything, it just doesn't do it for me. You know, it, it just, I don't know. It just, it just doesn't do it for me. But, um, Dead Space, the first Dead Space was the first horror game I genuinely loved. Like, I genuinely loved it. Like, I, I like, I always compared it to, like, it feels like a mixture of Gears of War and Resident Evil put together. It's like Gears of War, the combat and the play style is like Gears of War, but then it's like, Resident Evil in space and, and that's what catch me because I know uh, if you don't know I'm you know huge on sci-fi and all that kind of stuff I'm a big sci-fi person um yeah I'm, I'm huge on sci-fi that's so Dead Space would catch my attention I remember first playing it even though it's not super scary but it does have its moments where you're going to get the jump scares and hopefully when they make this remake they can't switch it up a bit so that way you don't get the same jump scares Whatever, because it's not a re they didn't say remaster, they say remake. So that means, again, they said it in the, um, in the article, they built it from the ground up. But it was one of the first horror games that I genuinely enjoyed. And, you know, I didn't really play the second one, nor the third one, but I did watch, um, I did watch a Let's Play from T Strife Games. Shout out to her, by the way. That's how I found her channel. Uh, it was um, the Dead Space um, Let's Play. I remember watching the second and the third one. The second one was pretty cool. The third one, uh, it 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 just, it just it focused too much on the action more than the horror. And that's coming from me, mind you. I'm not big on horror games, but that's what made the first and the second one good. I think the third, see, because the third one, I think they want to focus much on the co-op. And you know what's funny? When the first one first came out, and after I finished playing it, I said they should do, like, they should incorporate co-op 
you know, or if they do multiplayer, um, did the second or the third one have multiplayer? I don't remember. But I said if they should, if they had multiplayer, they should incorporate, um, incorporated by like you know, you have to survive by relying on each other. Like you might be on one part of the ship, and then the person you play with might be on the other one. You have to like you know, work on stuff so that way they can sub that kind of thing. So yeah, the third one was just, uh, it was, uh, but that's definitely interesting, and I would definitely play that and do a let's play for that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I got so many, st I got so much stuff I need to catch up on because I already told y'all that the uh, Ghost of Shushima let's play, um, what happened with that, but um, uh, but yeah. New, you know, Dead Space remake, blah, 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 whoop, whoop. Now, here's an interesting article that I came across. Because where I get all my articles from, where I get all my articles from is on my cell phone, on, um, what is it, through Google. So, like, when you go to, like, the Google search engine, whatever, uh, it comes up with a whole bunch of news stuff. So based upon like your search history and all that kind of stuff, it kind of finds news based upon that. So with that being said, I'm just gonna come out and say it. Twitch streamer gets banned for milking a cow. I'm gonna let that sink in for a second. I'm gonna let that sink in. Twitch streamer gets banned <laughs> for milking a cow. I didn't even read this. Usually I read my article ahead of time or at least read like you know, like the first paragraph before I added to my show notes. I didn't even read this. This, this, this the headline alone <laughs> just made me put it on here. So here we go. And this uh, article is from Dexter, Dextertoe.com, D-E-X-E-R-T-O.com. Yeah, so Twitch streamer permanently banned from New World MMO after Milk of the Cow. It's the New World MMO. Is that the one that that is by Amazon? Let me look it up, up real quick. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, y'all can see my search history, but ain't nothing crazy. Um, do, do, do. What was it? I forgot why I was ready to look up. I'm having a squirrel moment. Oh, God, this is what ADHD does, y'all. I forgot totally why I was ready to look up. Uh, oh yeah, New World MMO. Yep, this was the um, MMO that was um, burning out everybody's graphics card, especially the 3090s. Ooh. Yep, it's the same one. Anyway, Milk and the Cow, and this is published on the 20th. Twitch streamer Annie Fuchessa, Fuchsia, F U C H S I A, let's just call her Annie, had quite the unfortunate first day trying it out. Her first day though? See, okay, and she got lucky. At least, <laughs> at least her graphics card didn't get burned out. She just got banned, so she can still play other games. It's just, she can't stream on Twitch no more. She got to come to YouTube. Just. <laughs> At least her graphics card didn't get burned out. <laughs> so that just tells me not to um not to play that game first of all. I'm not gonna play this game for my graphics card. I don't have a 30 series um graphics card, but I'm still not taking that chance. Graphics cards are expensive. Anyway. <laughs> Twitch streamer and he had quite the unfortunate first day trying out an Amazon. Amazon's MMO RPG New World after being permanently banned for an extremely bizarre reason. New World's closed beta went live on July 20, 20th and Annie was among the many streamers ready to get in on the action. While the first few moments seemed to go well and this chair is loose because of this wheel to go well enough minus a couple of connection related hiccups, the streamer seemed to be enjoying herself. <laughs> Y'all, I'm having too much fun reading this. I'm, I'm not even in the bread and butter yet. I'm already dying, y'all. Look. <laughs> that was until she decided to try milking a cow, and for whatever reason, the game decided this was. <laughs> Here's a video. 
Wait a minute. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So she was milking the cow in the game. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to mute this and I'm going to play real quick. Hold on, y'all. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait. What? Wait, wait. So... Hold on. I had to take my glasses off for this. Are you serious? This went from being funny because of the title to why. Just why. She So she milked, she milked the cow in the game? And she got banned by the game? Wait a minute. Hold on. This is how I know I read too fast. I thought she got banned on Twitch because she was milking the cow on the... Let's continue reading. After finish milking the cow, a bottle of milk appealed and a screen popped out claiming that she had received a permanent ban. It's bad spelling aside, she was absolutely be bewildered by the decision. <laughs> what? That's not even spelled correctly, she, she exclaimed. The pop-up didn't provide any help determining why she had been banned either. With its simply stating reason, you have been banned. And this is it right here, y'all. Wow. Annie was under the impression that milking cows wasn't allowed, but luckily fellow Twitch streamer Asmago, I think I'm saying that right, Asmago, Asmago, I think that's how you say it. Heard about her ban and called her to provide some assistance. My chat was telling me that you got banned. I talked to someone from New World. They're watching the, st the stream. And they said it was an accident. He revealed. They're looking into it. Oh, so it's okay to milk. <laughs> oh, Will, please don't fall off. I'm going to have to get this wheel replaced. Come on, Will. Oh gosh, I'm dead, y'all. I'm weak. I'm, I just died on the inside. <laughs> oh gosh, this podcast is going terrible. The wheels is falling off. I thought she got banned from Twitch because she was milking an actual cow. When come to find out, she was milking a cow in the game, and the game banned her. What is going on here? Do -do -do. <laughs> Unfortunately. Asma God jokingly replied. <laughs> she then she said, "What do you mean? Unfortunately, that's a great thing. That it means we can drink milk." <laughs> while the <laughs> while the issue ended up actually being server related, the fact that the ban occurred after she milked the cow was utterly <laughs> utterly ridiculous. Not to mention that the weird spelling seemed like a callback to video games of yesteryear, such as the infamous. You're a winner in big rigs because the game is still in closed beta. It's very likely to spell it in absurd Absurd bands got resolved, but it was quite the weird impression the first impression of Amazon's MMs MMO to say the least Oh And let me tell you something real quick this this Yeah, see if, you, if you're watching the video version, you're seeing what I'm highlighting uh, For people that's listening to the audio version. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to it but oh my god <sighs> y'all this is why reading is important first of all reading is important because i thought i thought the headline said she got banned from twitch for milking a cow but she got banned from the game because she milked the cow on the game. <laughs> y'all i needed that i needed that and unfortunately the next thing we're going to talk about is something that's serious or something that's Put it this way, after I finish reading this, we're going on an official boycott. And this is <laughs> the second episode where I said I'm going to boycott something. Because one of the episodes I said I was going to boycott Be um, Best Buy, which I've been doing pretty well on doing that. <laughs> um, Yeah. So, the next thing we're going to talk about, which is very, 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 like, like on a serious note. Activate Activision Blizzard is getting sued for sexual harassment. Yep. I'm not reading that wrong. I know I have problems reading sometimes, but I'm not reading that wrong. 
this podcast this podcast um if y'all still listening to this podcast, oh my god, I appreciate y'all. Y'all some real ones, cause this is the worst uh, episode of my podcast ever. <laughs> oh, um. Anyway, so this article is also by Kotaku, and the headline says Activision Blizzard sued by California over widespread harassment of women. Um, the lawsuit highlights multiple instances of harassment and discrimination that are a violation of state civil rights. So, in that other article that I was reading, um, it was also talking about Asma Gold. Uh, I highlighted what he said, um, where this, where this headline says, Asma Gold urges fans to leave Blizzard employees and creators alone amid, um, lawsuit. So, that's what I was talking about earlier. But... Um, let's get to reading. Activision Blizzard, the publishing giant behind everything from Call of Duty. So yeah, no more playing Call of Duty for me. Even though I don't really, I don't, I never really played it, but now I'm definitely not going to play it. At least for now, anyway. So um, Call of Duty, the Overwatch is being sued by the California Department of Fair Employment and housing over a frat boy workplace culture that it alleges had led to years of harassment and abuse targeting the women in the workforce, in its workforce. Ooh, this is strong right here. I'm gonna highlight this. Contain warning, suicide, harassment, and the R word. If you know what R word I'm talking about. <sighs> we go from that, that crazy article that I just re- read, um, before this to this this is this is real serious though we need to talk about this bloomberg reports that the suit filed on july 20th is the accumulation of a two-year investigation two years into the publisher by the department which says that activation blizzards compliance with california's broad workplace protections is long overdue to enforce to enforce such compliance the case says the df E.H. brings this government enforcement action seeking to uh, remedy, prevent, and deter activation, Activision's blizzards, violations of states, civil rights, and equal pay laws. We're going to read this whole article because this is important. This is really important. While pointing out the lack of women in leadership positions at the company, which is a lot of places, but this is real serious. And not to say Activision is the only one that's doing this, but of course there's other companies that's doing this, but just the one that's getting out of the public, to the public. And the difficulties they have faced in gaining promotions. The suit also highlights enormous pay discrepancies at the executive level between women and men and says women are not only promoted more slowly, they're also terminated more quickly than their male counterparts. The company's frat boy workplace culture culture is also mentioned as a breeding ground for harassment and discrimination against women some of the examples provide, provided include in the office women are subjected to cube crawls in which male employees see this is the part I was reading and I had to stop because I'm like you know what I'm going to read this whole thing to y'all in which male employees drink copious I think I'm saying that right. C O P I O U S. Copious amounts of alcohol as they crawl their way through various cubicles in the office and often engage in inappropriate behavior towards female employees. What the heck? Like, no, like seriously, what would make, what would make somebody think that at work? At work, though. Male employees proudly come into work hungover play video games for long periods of time during work while delegating their responsibilities to female employees engage in banter about their sexual encounters talk openly about female bodies and joke about rape we gotta keep reading this female employees are uh, subjected to constant sexual harassment including having to continually fend off on what is sexual comments and advances by their male co-workers and supervisors and being groped at the cube crawls and other company events. High-ranking executives and creators engage in blatant sexual harassment without repercussions. In a particularly tragic example, a female employee committed, oh my gosh, 
committed suicide during a business trip with a male supervisor who have brought I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this um brought B plugs B U T T plugs and lubricant with him on the trip what the what the hell oh my gosh um also highlighted was situations where female employees were treated negatively due to their pregnancies we reported in 2019 that activision was seeking to monitor employees pregnancies what Supervisors ignored medical restrictions given to female employees and gave them negative evaluations while they were out on maternity leave. Other female employees reported that they were criticized for leaving to pick up their children from daycare while their male counterparts were playing video games and female employees were kicked out of lactation rooms so employees could use the room for meat. For those that's, that's listening to the audio version, I had to take off my glasses for that. For those that don't know what the lactation rooms are, let me just explain real quick. You know, when after a woman gives birth, you know, they're breastfeeding and all that stuff. And you know, when they're breastfeeding, they have to pump the milk and laws. The, there's been laws that's in place to say they need, they have to, the company has to provide rooms for them to do that so they can pump their milk. And apparently, they're kicking them out of these rooms. Oh, gosh. In instances, I'm, I'm going to continue reading. In instances where women of color were particularly vulnerable targets of discriminatory practices. Ooh, this is getting hard to read. Uh, an African-American employee noted that it took her two years to be made into a permanent employee while men hired after her were made permanent employees. She also were she also was micromanaged such that her male co-workers were known to be playing video games without any intervention by her supervisor. But her supervisor would call and check on her this if she took a break to go on a walk. Another African American employee who worked in information technology was similarly micromanaged by her manager, unlike the men on her team. What the heck is going on at Activision? When she requested time off work. Her manager made her write a one-page summary of how she was spending the time all when no one else had to do any write-up. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I just, this, is, this is boycott written all over. The suit also accused his Activision Blizzard of failing to act on numerous complaints concerning harassment, discrimination, and retaliation from male colleagues over those complaints and says employees affected were further discouraged from complaining as human resource personnel were known to be close to alleged harassers. The DFEH has brought the suit seeking an injunction that will force Activision Blizzard to not only begin complying with state workplace laws but also address unpaid wages, pay adjustments, payback and lost wages and benefits for female employees. In January of this year, Activision Blizzard called attempts to make its workplace more diverse, unworkable. Um, let me read that again. That didn't come around. In January of this year, Activision Blizzard called attempts to make its workplace more diverse, unworkable. Yeah, okay. Here's an update as of 7 21 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Activision has responded to the DFEH suit with a lengthy statement that calls the DFEH and its suits irresponsible behavior from accountable state bureaucrats. We value diversity. This is what Activision Blizzard is saying. We value diversity and strive to foster a workplace that offers exclusivity. I probably butchered that word. For everyone, there is no place in our company or industry or any industry for sexual misconduct or harassment of any kind. We take every allegation seriously and investigate all claims. Uh huh. And cases related related to misconduct, action were taken to address the issue. Activision, you think people are making this up? Oh gosh. The DFEH includes distorted, in many cases, false descriptions of Blizzard's past. I, okay, let me say this real quick. 
I do believe in innocent until proven guilty. But this stuff ain't coming out of nowhere. A two-year investigation and then this is coming up. This ain't coming out of nowhere. Like, there's stuff you can't make up. So, anyway. We have been extremely cooperative with the DFEH throughout their investigation, including providing them with extensive data and ample documentation, but they refuse to inform us what issues they perceive. They were required by law to adequately investigate and to have good faith discussions with us to better understand and to resolve any claims or concerns concerns before going to litigation but they failed to do so instead they rushed to file an inaccurate complaint as we will demonstrate in court we are sickened by the we are sickened are sickened by this we hip i'm not even going to say the word by this conduct of the dfeh to drag into the complaint the tragic suicide of an employee whose passing has no bearing whatsoever on this case and with no regard for her grieving family while we find this behavior to be disgraceful and unprofessional unprofessional it is unfortunate unfortunately an example how they have conducted themselves throughout the course of their investigation it is this type of responsible irresponsible behavior from unaccountable state bureau cats bureau cats that are driving many of the state's best businesses out of california this is all the stuff further update 722-2021 further examples of the last treatment of mothers and black employees added to the story okay that's everything so far oh my gosh like I've been seeing stuff all over like YouTube, like, you know, a whole bunch of videos and all that stuff. And like I said, I started reading the article, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to read the whole thing when I start this podcast. Oh, my gosh. Like. Like, like this is a, a genuine freaking reaction from me. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, I was this is wow. Like. Excuse me. All I'm going to say is this. I believe in innocent until proven guilty. But this is huge. This is, like I said, multiple instances of harassment and discrimination. Not one, not two, but multiple. This They ain't making this up. Why would they make this up? Why? Why would no more Call of Duty? Even though I don't really play it. Unfortunately, no more Crash Bandicoot. I wanted to play that, but I'm not playing that. No more Spyro. I wanted to play Sekiro, but that is published by Activision, so at least until this whole thing is 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 resolved so until this thing this investigation all this stuff is resolved until everything is fixed until this whole thing has been dealt with no more activision games for me i'm boycotting activision i'm done with activision because this is sick especially the whole the, the 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 female employee committed suicide that's disgusting that like that that like i'm gosh yeah i i'm in serious shock i'm not i'm not even gonna like this is a genuine i'm done uh, no act, active no nope 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 if i have any activision games i'm done with them i'm done with activision I'm trying to think if I have any Activision games, but they're done. They're done. Like, I hate the fact that the previous um, article had me laughing. Now this one has me basically speechless. I'm definitely gonna be keeping my eye on this um, on this story because this is sick. Like, why? Just, just this is sick right here. Like, I don't even know what to say no more. 
like like it was already discussed enough about the whole cubicle crawl or whatever that whatever it's called I don't even care what it's called like the cube crawls I'm trying to watch my language here but jeez what the hell like Hopefully, all those employees, the female um, employees I was working there, hopefully they get the justice that they get. Um, again, again, hold on, I'm not even going to jump the gun. All this, is, I have to remember to say this is all alleged. This is all alleged. This is all alleged. It's still a, a, a pending investigation. They're going in the, uh, well, it's an investigation done. Either way, this is still alleged, I believe. Yeah, this is still alleged, so I'm not going to say they did it, but if this is true. Activision was already going through it um, enough, but this, this is the nail in the coffin. So, And if this is going on for all the male, not even just at Activision, at any workplace alone, any. Let me say this real quick, y'all. I'm going to kind of turn this to myself a little bit, but this is important. So, if y'all don't know, I work at Amazon right now. I'm not gonna lie. The women over there are beautiful. And I love the look at them. I'm not even gonna lie, I love the look of them. Look at them. But I keep it at that. I might turn my head, look real quick, and keep it moving. I would never, ever, never make somebody feel uncomfortable at, uh, at their job. When you go to work, you have the right to uh, a safe um, workplace. No matter what your job is, you have the right to a safe workspace, male or, male or female. I should not have to go to work. Nobody should have to go to work and feel unsafe, especially from the from your very co-workers. That should be the last people you should think are trying to go after you or trying to or are harassing you. That should be the last thing. I have, I have a sister, I have a goddaughter, I have a mother, I have cousins, aunts, a grandmother. And it happens to males too, but right now we're talking about women. Let any of them come to me and say there's some dude at their job harassing them, doing this, that, and the other. I will be in that building so quick. Y'all think I'm lying. Y'all think I'm lying. I am so serious. And I was just talking about on my stream earlier how I don't have a tough guy demeanor. But that being said, it is my responsibility, and I'm all over the place, but this, 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 is, some, this is some real stuff. As males especially in the black community as black men it is our responsibility to protect our queens protect black women because it does say women of color on here as well it is our responsibility to protect women so if anybody that i'm close to come to me and say this is what's going on at their job you better hope it I'm just going to say this for any managers, executives, and all this stuff. I'm just going to leave it at this. Y'all better, y'all better hope I'm in the right state of mind when I'm told this. Y'all better hope I take the right approach. If anybody that I love that and I'm close to, and I know I'm turning this on myself, but this is some real... This, this is real, and I hope all the men that are listening, that are watching, take heed to this. Better hope I'm in the right state of mind if somebody come to me and say this was going on at work, because I will be in that building. And you better... Anyway, no, no, I, I don't want to indicate myself. Men, all I'm going to say is this. Our job is to protect our women, right? And I know everybody gonna be like, oh, she lying and this, that and stuff. Women can, could be lying, cause there are women that lie. But 
until there's investigation, until there's an investigation and all that stuff, until there's an investigation, until everything is proven, we should at least take their word for it. We should listen. We shouldn't dismiss them. There should be an investigation. We look into it. Don't dismiss those claims. Yes, women lie, but that's a whole nother story. But, okay, I'm done with this. Just, I'm, I'm done, because this is making me mad. This is actually making me mad. I knew it was bad from when I first started reading this, but once it got to the whole suicide thing, anyway, let, let, let's get to the end of the podcast, because we are at an hour and 30 minutes. Um... This is the last thing I want to talk about. Um, that completely threw me for a loop. We, we go, we, we. I'm about to fall off this chair again. I'm really going to have to look into this wheel. Hold on, y'all. Come on. The last thing I want to talk about is self-care, right? I'm, I'm trying to forget that last thing. Um, but yeah, we're boycotting Activision until father notice, until this whole thing is clear. Until this whole thing is is, is dealt with. Do I have any Activision stuff in my room? Uh, I don't think so. But on the real, um, the last thing I want to talk about is self-care. And I'm trying to make this quick because this podcast went on way longer than I thought it would. Self-care is important. Now, in the beginning of the podcast, I noticed I showed off all this stuff. And this is the reason why I showed off all this stuff. Not to flex on y'all. Not to be like, oh, I got this. The reason why I did because part of this is self-care. Now, that don't mean, when I say part of this is self-care, that don't mean spend all your money like... You know how some people, when they do emotional shopping, I, I yeah, there's another term for it. Ther- uh, therapy shopping, that's what it's called. Or shopping therapy, something like that. I used to do that a long time ago. I don't do that no more. Through the last three, four years, I mean, I've treated myself, but I've always been helping somebody out. To the point I ignore myself. And in this last year that has gone by, um, I focus more on myself. And like before I got this job at Amazon, I was in a very tight financial place. And I still am, but I'm much I'm in a much better financial place now. Way much better better financial place like I actually have money in my savings now like before when I was working on my other job I had no money in my savings I was struggling to pay bills like my account was and this is not me you know trying to tell all my problems to everybody because I know the reason why you come here is to escape from your problems but I'm, I'm going somewhere with this and I don't want no sympathy. This is not me asking for sympathy. I, this is not a woe is me. Anything like that. This is just... I'm Again, I'm going somewhere with this. I could barely pay my bills. I barely have money to put in my car. Um, I was going through a lot of stuff. Don't want to get to the details of the other stuff. But I was just going through a lot of stuff. If I, it's, I went through depression. I'm not... I'm not I, I, I'm not even gonna lie, I went through depression. And I discussed it before, I, I went through depression before, but I was going through some deep depression. And the financial situation did not help at all. So, after a year, you know, of therapy and all this kind of stuff, and now I'm at a better job, I'm in a better place. So, Part of this, when, when I bought some of this stuff, part of it is for the channel, of course, but also part of it is self care because it's. I wanted to treat myself. Now, materialistic items don't make me happy, but it's like, okay, you got to treat yourself from time to time. 
But not only that, not only buying stuff and shopping for yourself is part of self-care, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into self-care. For example, there's a two-letter word that I feel like is the ultimate definition of self-care. Excuse me. And that is no. The word no. The reason why we spiral into depression and spiral to where we go, because sometimes we don't know how to say no. Sometimes we have to be selfish. Now, I'm not saying be ultra selfish. Don't ever do anything for nobody. That is not what I'm saying at all. But sometimes you have to take time for yourself. People, a lot of people ask you for favors, for money, and this, that, and the other. Sometimes you just have to say no. And that's what I've been doing a lot. I've been doing a lot of no's lately. There have been times I don't answer phone calls. It used to be because I didn't want to talk to nobody. Now it's more of I'm doing something. I'll call you back. I'll text you back. But this is my time. Also, another thing of self-care. I'm sorry, y'all. It's just that, that that previous article still got me messed up. But let's go forward. Do not be afraid to take that PTO. This week, right? I've been having an off week this week. Not a bad week, just off. Now, luckily at my job, if you have the if you have PTO, you can take your PTO whenever. It is automatically approved. Back in the day, I used to feel guilty about taking time off. I even told one of my old bosses one time. Like, I don't like to call out at all. I don't like to take time off of work. Like, you you have to force me to take time off of work. And I'm going to tell my boss that. Now, if I have the time, if I need the time, I'm taking it off. I don't care what you say. I don't care what any of my bosses say. If I need to take the time off and I have it, I'm taking the time off. That's another thing of self-care. Do not let that job overwork you because if something happens to you, they're going to replace you just like that. So I took PTO this week. Well, I only took one day off, but... And it was at the last minute, but I did it. If I can do it, I'm going to do it. And at first, I was feeling guilty about it. I was struggling with it. Then I was like, you know what? I went on my phone, put in the PTO. I'm good. Another thing of self-care is getting into your hobbies, doing what you love to do. Take time for yourself. This, my whole YouTube thing, yes, I want to make a career out of it, but this is also fun for me. This is a release. This is a therapy for me. I love doing this. This is what I love to do. I got the house to myself right now. So, this is what I decided to do. I could be loud. I could be obnoxious. Again, I just did the stream. I just got back on Twitch for the first time in months. I'm being obnoxious. I'm being all crazy, this, that, and the other. I lost all my matches on Halo. Not because of me. Because my team was garbage or the other team was good. Really good. But I had fun at the end of the day. Behind me, I don't know if you see, there's this white thing that's on the corner if you're watching the video version. That's a candle. Every time I come in here to make content, whether it's the podcast, I'm streaming, or recording videos, I always light that candle up. I'm in the candles and all that stuff. What is it? Aromic therapy and all that stuff. Smell goods. I'm into that now because that's part of my self-care. Another part of my self-care is... Um, I've discussed this before, but... I've been doing grass cutting with me and my... Um, me and my dad have been doing grass cutting for years since I was... 15, right? It started off with my grandma's yard, then the neighbors, and now we have our own side um, business of cutting grass. And we've been doing this for 10 years now. But I've been, I never liked cutting grass, but it was good money. But after a while, as I got older, and I'm talking about like 23, 24, and all this kind of stuff, as I, especially once I decided I want to do content creation. I've been wanting to stop doing grass cutting for a long time, but I didn't want to disappoint my dad. And the money was good. It was decent side money. But it takes up a lot of time because we both work full-time jobs. So now the days that I should be off to recover and relax and do what I want to do, I got to cut grass. 
So in August, the end of August, my dad supposed to be getting surgery, right? And in the beginning of the year, see, he's gonna be out for a while. In the beginning of the year, I thought I would be able to do everything. I thought I'd be able to work. I thought I'd be able to cut grass, do my chicken business, which by the way, I'm putting that on hold because of this reason I'm discussing now. I thought I'd be able to do YouTube. I thought I'd be able, because I'm also going back to school, well, finishing school and all this stuff. I thought I'd be able to do all that. But during my time of recovery and therapy and all this stuff and sitting back and thinking, I'm like, first of all, I'm going to overwork myself. I'm already overworked as it is. Well, I'm, I'm in a better spot now. I'm like, that was one of the reasons why I was going through my depression. I was overworking myself. I was doing everything but what I wanted to do for me. So me and my dad have a discussion. I was like, part of the reason why I want I, I don't want to do grass cutting no more because I can't I won't be able to keep up by myself. But another reason is because I want to focus on what I want to do. I know he don't want to um stop doing the grass cutting, but again, he's having back surgery. He's gonna be out for a while. Somebody needs to take care of my dad. Somebody needs to take care of the house. I can't do all that by myself. Which he's fine with. He's he's fine with. I think he was a little disappointed, but he's fine with. But I say I can't do it because first of all, that's part of my healing and self-care is not to overwork myself. I have problems sleeping. It takes me a while to go to sleep and all this kind of stuff. So like, cause after I cut grass, I immediately take a nap. So this is all part of my self-care. This shirt that I bought was for me all part of my self-care and it doesn't always have to man, man self-care doesn't always have to manifest in like buying stuff because that's i don't really again i'm trying to save money clear out my debt so i can finally get my own place so i can do content creation more once i get my own place i'm gonna do i can make so much content because these walls these are paper thin walls but i'm, I'm going all over the place i'm sorry y'all square moment <laughs> But, oh, what was that? It's time for me to go to sleep. Um, on a serious note, I'm, I just want to tell everybody because I didn't get this these lessons until later on in life. And I know I have a younger audience. Take care of yourself. Sometimes you have to say no. Don't, don't take on too much. And sometimes your self-care is sleeping in bed all day. From time to time, I'm not saying a lot, because if you do that too much, then that's a problem. That's a clear sign of depression. But whether it's exercising, taking walks, hanging out with friends, well, uh, hanging, hanging out with friends can be semi self care, you know, but, you know, taking bubble baths, taking longer showers, you know, just take care of yourself. And that's all I'm saying. Take care of yourself. Again, I'm starting to say a lot of no's. Um, definitely have boundaries. Boundaries are important for self-care. Because if you let people walk over your boundaries, if people don't respect your boundaries, first of all, if people don't respect your boundaries, you need to get them out your life. Or love them from a distance. But boundaries are important. If you don't have those boundaries, that's how depression also kicks in. That's how anxiety really kicks in. So I just wanted to, and, and like, like when I did my um my roundup today, this is a part of self care because like for the longest like my other videos, if y'all noticed, I haven't did a roundup in a long time. I was looking like the Black Wolverine, like I said earlier. Or did I say that on stream? I don't know. But all this is self care. Like I felt good when I did this. I felt so lazy about doing it, but when I finally did it, I felt so good. I'm looking in the mirror like, I look good. Like, why don't I have a girl? Yeah, I look good. <laughs> no, but like, seriously, I've been feeling good about myself uh, for the last few months. And like, even like, you know, I know with Amazon, I know they have their reputation. You know, it's like slave labor and all this kind of stuff. I know they have a bad reputation, but with me working there it honestly gave me a second chance at least financially anyway 
And that's and that's another thing because I was gonna originally do like the end of um this podcast, name this section like you know the perspective like end of the less I, I I don't know. It was gonna be perspective, but instead I decided to talk about self care. Take care of yourself. I can't think of any other self care things right now because my mind is jumbled because it's time for me to go to sleep. I gotta wake up in the morning. It's like almost three o'clock in the morning. I gotta cut grass in the morning, which. Around seven, eight o'clock. Only got two yards, but still. Uh, look up some self-care techniques. Actually, let's look it up together right now. Hold on. What is self-care? So, what is self-care and why is it critical for your health? According to this definition, we're on everydayhealth.com. Um... Hold on, where's that definition at? Because this is a whole article. I don't really want a whole article. Basically, according to the definition, self-care includes everything relating to staying staying physically healthy, including hygiene, nutrient, and seeking blah, blah, blah. What is it? The ability of individuals, families, and communities to promote health, prevent disease, maintain health, to cope with illnesses and disability without the support of a health care provider. Okay, that's something else. Uh, I mean, that's all the same thing, just taking care of yourself. What are the examples of self-care? Self-care activities can range from physical activities such as exercising and eating health to mental activities such as reading a book or practicing mindfulness, you know, like meditation and all that stuff, which I haven't meditated since I went to the Japanese garden. Garden. When I talked about in my last um, episode of the podcast. Um, but I need to get back to that. To spiritual or social activities such as praying or catching lunch with a friend. And like one of the things I've been doing too. I've been listening to like audio books as well. So There are eight main areas of self-care. Physical, psychological, emotional, social, professional, environmental, spiritual, and financial. That's it. Self care is important, and I really can't find my words right now. So, but yeah, um, that is gonna be the end of this podcast. This might be the longest episode of this podcast I've ever done because we at uh, an hour and forty eight minutes. This might be cut a little, well, probably gonna be a little shorter than that because of editing and all that stuff. But the point of the matter is, um. Yeah, this is the end of the podcast. It's late. I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. I'm sleepy, but I enjoy it as usual. And this is probably one of the worst episodes, but I still always have fun. So, yeah, if you're watching the video version, go ahead again. Um, press the like, you know, press the like button. Drop a comment because um, because that really helps out the algorithm. So more people so it can reach to more people. If you're listening to the audio version, whether it's on Spotify, Anchor, um, Google Podcasts, whatever platform is on, rate it, uh, give it a good rating. Be honest about it. I will say, be honest about it, but give it a good rating so it can also reach out, uh, so it can go up in the algorithm and reach out to other people as well. Um, all of that I appreciate. Um, what else we got? Um, again, if you want to uh, financially support the channels, financially support the podcast, the movement, all that kind of stuff. My cash app is dollar sign I um yeah dollar dollar sign I Irvin TV. Follow all my social medias um they're on the screen. But for the people that's listening to the audio version, um, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Twitter. What's the other one? Snapchat. All of them. All of them. Go ahead and follow all of them. And I do respond. It might take me a little bit, but I do respond to them. I do see. And even, even if I don't respond, I at least acknowledge by, like, you know, pressing the like or the heart or whatever. I do acknowledge, um, you know, comments and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's it for, what is it, episode eight? Yeah, episode eight. And everyone have a good rest of the day. And as usual, promoting peace, gaming, and wings.